No, let's move on. Bill Gates and other philanthropists are to give nearly £100 million to counter government cuts to the foreign aid budget. Uh, though it must be said it's pretty much a drop of the ocean, isn't it, to the £4 billion that's been taken away. Uh, but it is pretty embarrassing for Boris Johnson. Delighted to say that Anaya uh, joins us this morning. Good morning to you, Anaya. Uh, talking about this, first of all, so what's the motivation? We know, obviously, you know, uh, Bill Gates is a big a philanthropist, but what, what is, is it political to try and embarrass Boris Johnson or, or is he genuinely just trying to help plug the gap? Well, I think he has been involved quite extensively in terms of funding different things in relation to vaccinations globally. So he is somebody that's very passionate about um, spending money internationally in order to support developing countries in particular. And I think it's entirely legitimate for an individual like Bill Gates or any other international observer to question whether or not Britain taking this decision is going to have implications for its standing internationally. I mean, this also comes within the last couple of weeks where Priti Patel is introducing or wants to introduce the Nationality and Borders Bill, wherein many NGOs and other um, prominent individuals working in this area have questioned whether or not this is going to have quite significant implications with how the UK is perceived in terms of supporting developing countries and, and its international obligations. I think in a post-Brexit Britain, it's understandable that Britain can take democratic decisions about how it wants to spend its money internationally. But I think at least in the short term, it would want to project itself as a, as a country that is going to be taking a significant um, stance on the world stage and engaging with global partners and supporting developing countries. And this particular cut as a percentage of GDP is actually part of a 1970 um, pact that this UK signed with um, with the United Nations and other influential countries took this decision as well, such as Germany and Japan. And in terms of a percentage of GDP, we are actually behind many countries, such as Norway, such as Sweden, such as Luxembourg and other um, countries in Scandinavia. And therefore, I think I think it is something that could embarrass Boris Johnson. But obviously, his argument is quite compelling, and it's one that will resonate with many British people. Um, in light of the economic devastation of the decisions made as a result of the handling of the pandemic, many people, millions of people, have fallen through the cracks. Gross inequality has increased exponentially. But whether that cutting of the foreign aid budget is actually going to be spent on improving the material conditions of people in the United Kingdom, I think remains to be seen. Mm. We know, Anaya, that this isn't popular kind of across the board with the Tory party. There are at least 50 MPs, including Theresa May, who, who opposed the reduction in, um, in our aid budget. I mean, is a vote likely soon? And, and what would be, will it pass? I mean, will it pass? Will this get through? I, I think it possibly will. I think that this is something, I mean, despite the fact that the Conservative manifesto in 2019 actually does mention that it wanted to maintain the 0.7% of GDP. There are a lot of Conservatives um, that, that do support this. And I think it I think it has the possibility of passing, but I think it's going to be um, receiving a lot of pushback um, because obviously we are at a time where, for example, despite the fact that the vaccination programme, for example, in this country, it has been quite successful. Many developing countries, it's far from actually even reaching a quarter of the population, let alone getting themselves to the level of herd immunity. And some of the commitments that many of the G7 countries made in regard to uh, making sure that developing countries um, get their vaccinations, that a lot of those things will not even be fulfilled for another 18 months. So we're talking about a long time when many developing countries during this critical time um, are going to be struggling. And then on top of that, having international aid cut to the tune of 4 billion is going to be a stranglehold on, on countries that genuinely rely on it. And I'm saying this as somebody who thinks in a post-Brexit Britain, taking democratic decisions about how we spend our money internationally and our economic priorities is entirely legitimate. But it's the timing at an incredibly difficult time for many countries at the bottom of the in, in the global south. And um, this is going to be something that's going to hit them quite hard, I think. Well, well, this is exactly it. And I know this is a four billion pound cut uh, to some of essential services across the globe. I mean, who gets hit hardest by this? You know, which demographics, which countries do we think will be most impacted um, if we do um, reduce our, our aid budget? 
I think that's a very good question. I think there is this perception that international aid is spent on incredibly wealthy um, countries that it's just used for diplomatic purposes. And I think that there, there is a compelling argument for that. And I also believe that it is entirely reasonable to question how the money is being spent, if it's actually being given to people that are most in need. But if we actually really look at the countries that are the biggest recipients, we're talking about Pakistan, Ethiopia, Afghanistan, Yemen, um, the Democratic Republic, Republic of Congo, Somalia, Syria. These aren't necessarily countries that are known for being incredibly wealthy, economically and politically stable countries. So we're talking about oftentimes countries that are um, victims of huge uh, economic and, and, and social deprivation and, and having lots of difficulties um, in terms of their political stability and, and, and good governance. And so a lot of the countries are actually in the biggest recipients of British um, financial um, international aid are actually a lot of the countries that are probably most in need and are in critical conditions at the moment. And I, uh, as always, fascinating insight. Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us this morning. They're talking about um, the £4 billion cut to British aid and indeed Bill Gates seemingly stepping in with uh, 100 million quid to try and have plugged some of that gap. But as you were suggesting, Becca, there's going to be a vote on this, almost certainly in Parliament, uh, and the government may well have to do a U-turn on it. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.